Psalm 118. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Good morning. A warm welcome to our virtual service on this Palm Sunday. On Palm Sunday, we hold our palm crosses and gather to echo the praise of the crowds when Jesus entered Jerusalem. But we also enter this Holy Week with him and look towards another cross and beyond it to the triumph of his resurrection. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus was greeted by cheering crowds, but those crowds turned him against him. So let us bring to mind now those times when we too have turned from the Lord and ask God's forgiveness. In times of trouble, we have doubted our Creator's purpose. Lord, have mercy. In times of joy, we have not thanked our Saviour. Christ, have mercy. In times of confusion, we have not sought the Spirit's guidance. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Absolution. Then I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgive the guilt of my sin. Psalm 32 verse 5 So may God's infinite love surround us in bringing forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Collect prayer. True and humble King, hailed by the crowds as the Messiah. Grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside on the way to the cross, which is the path of God's glory, through Jesus, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Please join us in singing Make Way, Make Way.
the scripture reading comes from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Here ends the reading. Before Palm Sunday, a church decided to practice processions a few times with a live donkey to make sure that the donkey gets used to children and adults shouting and singing. The first day he was running all over and it was a nightmare for the owner to control the donkey. When children started singing, he too started braying. After a few practices, the donkey got used to it and they all had a successful procession on Palm Sunday with the donkey behaving very well. In today's story, Jesus was riding on a colt or a small donkey. Unlike the previous one, it was gentle and peaceful to carry Jesus. It was a time of the Jewish festival Passover. Jerusalem was filled with thousands of worshippers who came to celebrate the Passover festival. The city of Jerusalem sits on the top of the mountain, 2,576 feet high above sea level. Just opposite towards east side of Jerusalem, there's a mountain called Mount of Olives, which is 2,710 feet above sea level. And such height provided a splendid view of Jerusalem. In between these two mountains, Kidron Valley was located. On the east side of Mount of Olives, there were two villages mentioned in our text today, Bethphage and Bethany. Sometimes Bethphage is also called Bethphage. But for us today, let us say Bethphage. In Bethany, there were families who were very close to Jesus. In Mark chapter 14, 
Simon's family is mentioned, where Jesus had a meal in his house. There is another family who had three siblings, Martha, Mary and their brother Lazarus, who Jesus raised from the dead. Jesus, arriving there, sent two of his disciples, most likely to Bethphage, to bring the young donkey. He said, go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one ever sat. Untie it and bring it. It was most likely a young donkey. Jesus mentioning particularly that no one ever sat on it indicates the purpose of his riding it. In the Old Testament, Numbers chapter 19, Deuteronomy chapter 21 and 1 Samuel chapter 6, it is mentioned that the animals that had never been ridden were especially suitable for royal or sacred purposes. Hence, in the first century political practice, a king could temporarily use someone's animal without even asking. Donkeys were used by the kings when they entered the city in peace, but in the case of attack, they used horses. Judges chapter 10 verse 4 and chapter 12 verse 14. Jesus appears here as the servant king, predicted in Isaiah chapter 40 to 53 chapter. When the disciples went to fetch the young donkey, the people standing there asked why they were untying the colt. The disciples then answered just as Jesus said, the Lord has need of it and will send it back. The first time Jesus was claiming himself as the Lord. But people in Bethphage and also Bethany knew Jesus very well and they saw his miracles, heard his teachings and believed him to be the Lord, the teacher, the prophet and even believed him to be the Messiah who was to come. Though it was the first time for the donkey to carry Jesus, donkey was peaceful and gentle. The touch of the Prince of Peace brings peace no matter whatever chaotic situations we are in. In verse 7, when the two disciples brought the young donkey to Jesus, they threw garments and Jesus sat on it and the people joined spreading their garments on the road and others spread fresh, leafy, probably palm branches that they had just cut from the fields. According to 2 Kings chapter 9, verses 12 and 13, the garments thrown on the road was for the king to pass by. So the people who believed Jesus to be the king or the Messiah went ahead throwing their garments on the road and those who were following joined them shouting with joy saying Hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David Hosanna in the highest heaven so the crowd was greatly excited and filled with praise for the Messiah who taught with such authority healed the sick and raise the dead. Since Jesus set off from Bethany and Bethphage, I guess Simon's family or Martha, Mary and Lazarus family with the 12 disciples and other disciples who have been following Jesus all along must have joined the larger crowd who came to Passover festival shouting Hosanna to Jesus. The word Hosanna literally means save now. But in this context, it probably served simply an acclamation of welcome. But what is fascinating for me is that those who believed Jesus 
as their personal Savior and Lord who hope for the kingdom of heaven are going to celebrate the same manner in heaven. Do you know this? Let me read for you. This is yeah. found in Revelation chapter 7 verses 9 to 12. After this, I looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Then all the angels responded saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength to be our God forever and ever. Amen. Honestly, I can't wait to experience this. But now, in verse 11, Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Maybe he felt that was the last trip to Jerusalem temple in the courts. That, that's why he stopped there and looked around and went away to Bethany. He went away to Bethany probably to avoid premature arrest by the Jewish leaders and he probably stayed there with either Lazarus family or Simon's family. So what do we learn from this passage? One, one of the important things we notice in Jesus' ministry is that he always delegated responsibilities to the disciples through which they would learn new insights of him. Jesus did not do everything on his own. Instead, here the two disciples must have been thrilled to see what their master told him to had happened exactly as he said. This helped them to learn that following Jesus was not a passive job of sitting and listening to and watching Jesus all the time. It was instead an active job that requires serving him and others proactively. If we believe we are his disciples, then we should always try to find ways to help and be willing to serve the Lord. And this is what following Jesus means. Secondly, everything looked great. Jesus' popularity went wild because of the Passover and people united to welcome him as the king of the Jews. What could go wrong? But just in a couple of days, the same crowd turned 180 degrees to shout against Jesus and joined the refrains to crucify him. It demonstrates how fickle people's hearts were. So following Jesus is so much more than being carried away with emotions during exciting moments. It requires a deeply rooted commitment, reflection and sacrifice when it's not popular to follow him. Are we ready for it? Lastly, this passage, traditionally known as Jesus' triumphal entry, in all the four Gospels recorded this event and it was predicted by the prophet Zechariah in chapter 9. So that indicates that this particular event was very important historical event in Jesus' ministry. The Gospel writers 
often connected Jesus' ministry with the Old Testament prophecies to emphasize the point that God planned the redemption of humanity in Jesus right from the beginning of human history. This indicates that God's love for us is eternal, but our responsibility is to respond to his love and redemption and to commit our lives to Jesus. So, may Jesus be our Lord and Saviour of our lives and may he rule our hearts with his grace and mercy. Amen. Let us profess our faith by reading the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, God the, Father the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven. heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. Father. He will and come to judge the living and the dead. I, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, saints the forgiveness of sins, sins the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue our worship with Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. Father God, on this Palm Sunday, we remember the adulation Christ received on his journey into Jerusalem. Such adulation to turn within days to hatred and ridicule, leading to Christ's crucifixion. We acknowledge with shame and sorrow the sin, hatred and injustice which have led and still lead to violence and war. We pray for parts of the world where people now are starving displaced or terrorized because of man's inhumanity. We pray that nations and people everywhere, beginning with us, may turn to you, the Christ, the resurrected Prince of Peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God our Father, 
As Christ entered Jerusalem, let him enter our lives. Let the King of glory come in, that he may rule in our hearts, and that we may offer of our love and lives to him. We pray for and give thanks for our communities, our families, and those around us with whom we share our daily lives. <clears throat> we pray for those in our parish or deanery who are going through a particular time of grief, worry, or anxiety. For those who are concerned about families they are unable to be with at this time. For those who have contracted the COVID-19 virus and who are self-isolating and for those who are desperately ill in hospital, that you would bring healing. We remember those who are waiting for jabs and for our other hospital appointments in the hope that in time their needs may be met. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are working to keep us all safe during this unprecedented time. For the NHS staff and for the army of volunteers who will be caring for the most vulnerable. For those working hard to distribute medicine and food. And for those trying to manage in care homes with reduced resources. We bring before you, Lord, all who are doing what they can to help. We give thanks for our online worship services and for all those who are involved and working hard to produce them. In the past challenging year, while life was halted due to the pandemic, your faithfulness and grace endured in our lives. As we open our churches for worship and prayer, unite us in love and keep us safe from any outbreak as we rejoice in your presence and worship together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lastly, Lord, be with us all who have a difficult week ahead, like Christ, the scorned and the rejected, those who face insult or degradation. We think of those who will be persecuted for their faith or principle, for those whose spirit will be broken this week. In this pandemic period, we pray for homes where there is discord, for homes darkened by deceit and betrayal, for homes where loyalty and love are divided, and for those most, most vulnerable, the victims of domestic violence. Bring peace in those broken homes. Live in us, we pray, so that in all our doings, the light of your resurrection may shine through us. As we prepare for Easter, we pray that all those who need you will be touched by your love and that lives may be changed by the love of Jesus. We sum up our prayers with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. We're going to close with Hosanna.
Well, friends, thank you very much for joining us this morning on this Palm Sunday service. Our sincere thanks goes to Dr. Lisa McKenzie for the Bible reading and to Eamon Quigley for leading us in prayers. We thank our team members who have helped in music, singing and streaming this service. The final blessing. May you lift your palm cross high as you greet the King of Glory. May you bow to the cross of Calvary and tell the world its story. And may your lives be energized by God's undying love and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.